today uh, we will discuss about modulation and side bands. Well, uh, by now I understand uh, you must have got a feel of what the different types of signals are, whether they are stationary, non-stationary and then uh, how we can distinguish these two just by looking at it in the time domain, but more importantly we can look at them in the frequency domain, know their frequency contents and then try to characterize the signal. Uh, one thing you will realize when we are going to do FFT, we always assume that the signal is stationary. But you know that the process of FFT takes some time. What would happen if the signal was varying the instance you are doing the FFT? So, if you are, so for example, you are doing a number of FFTs, you have taken the first block of data, first block and the second block. is also being digitized and ready for FFT. But if this <coughs> you are trying to do and similarly you will be doing an average FFT, you will be doing a summation of all the FFTs and then dividing by, by the number of FFTs, so that you get your averaged FFT. The reason we do this averaging is because to reduce the random noise okay and this random noise error will actually reduce by this equation where n is the number of averages okay uh, this equation comes from the probability theory and we will not go into details of this but it is suffices to say that once we are doing the fft of a stationary signal if i do increase the number of averages the random noise will be reduced. Okay. So, averaging helps us to improve the signal characteristics or signal features while doing an FFT by removing the random noise. Otherwise, let me just give an example here that if you did an FFT of a signal you will perhaps get lot of low frequency, high frequency and, the, and this, this, this is could be because of the random noise present in the signal. This is in function of frequency, this is the amplitude. So, my objective is to reduce this random noise by having more number of averages of this stationary signal okay, and then, then I will have it sharp peak and this is the averaged FFT. Okay. But this is very realistic, very ideal, but what would happen if the machines, machines rotating speed undergoes a change. By change I mean not that you know you are running a machine at 1200 rpm, you want to run it at 1600 rpm and so on. No, I am not talking about that. I am talking about say for example, if you are running at 1200 rpm, because of a power supply variation. because of uh, load variation which could be inter intermittent on and off. So, this 1200 rpm will then vary by an amount of delta rpm, very small it could be 1 or 2 rpm. But what happens if you are taking this data continuously, you had assumed it to be stationary. So, you are violating the definition of stationarity. So, what happens? one average you know maybe I will draw them by different lines. These frequencies you know once it can be here, another time it will be here, another time it could be here. So, once you have an average of this, you may have a signal something like this and this is not desired, this is something. So, I cannot identify this 
frequency of my machinery because of the this is because of what is known as signal smearing. Signal smearing has occurred because the signal's frequency has changed while you are doing the FFT or while you are doing the average. But if it is a nice constant steady state constant speed machinery, if such averagings are done, then we will not have the problem of signal smearing. To avoid this, sometimes we do what is known as synchronous time averaging or frequency averaging. Once we do that, the spatial variation is uh, reduced and another method is by having a triggered acquisition. Okay. So, some of the features will be prominent when you do such time synchronous time averaging and frequency averaging. Okay. But many a times even sometimes just a single acquisition is good enough. For example, once the you know the signal is fluctuating quite often. So, we should be able to capture the uh, signal just by taking one block of data. Particularly while we are dealing with transient kinds of signal, this happens only once. So, the next block there may be no signal, previous block there could be no signal. So, in such a case may be just one block of data processing is sufficient particularly once we have such transient signals or for non stationary signals okay now here i would like to draw your attention to a signal processing module which we have developed at IIT Kharagpur under the virtual labs program of the Ministry of Human Resource and Development MHRD. So, I will uh, there is a lab on mechanical systems signal processing, which you can access through my website sorry www.iitnoise.com. It is linked to this website and once you go to the student resources, you will uh, click there and I will take you there. Then because a course on machinery condition and signal uh, processing cannot be just uh, 40 lectures, uh, it has to be also done uh, through some bit of labs. You know, we possibly will cannot go to the lab, so I have tried to bring the lab to this classroom. Okay. So, there are few experiments in this uh, portal where you can uh, do the virtual lab at home at your leisure and then try to generate signals, try to do their time domain analysis, frequency domain analysis. I will not take you to the detailed exercises in this class, but I will just show you how to access it. So, what you need to do is you can
you can go to this website on iitnoise.com and uh, this is the address. So, once you come to the student resources and there is a virtual laboratory in mechanical systems and signal processing. If you click here, it will take to the NPT uh, MHRD website on uh, virtual labs and this is the lab for mechanical systems and signal processing. In fact, uh, throughout the course of this uh, course when we are uh, going through the other examples, uh, other uh, lectures, we will come to these uh, experiments one by one. Right now, I can, uh, you can access basics of dynamic signals, basics of frequency domain signals. I mean the first four you could perhaps do right now. I will just show you how to invoke uh, basics of dynamic signals. All you do is click there and then there is an introduction of uh, understanding about the signals. Uh, there is a bit, um, a bit of theory on this topic and then uh, how do you, how you measure all the different time domain parameters and then you can go to the different modules. There are three modules by which you can generate the signal. One is by user defined waveforms, other is by mathematical function and the last one is your actual measured data. So, then in the user defined waveforms, you could generate a square wave, sine wave, triangular wave, sawtooth wave. You could write your own mathematical uh, expression of for the signals. You can add signals, see the beating phenomena, etcetera or you may have your own real world uh, data which you could perhaps uh, bring into these files. So, the module 1, uh, go to the simulation, I will just show you the screenshot of this signal. What happens here is you know, this is the screenshot you will be having. So, you can generate your signal, right now it is sawtooth, you can increase the, change the amplitude, give an offset to the amplitude, change the frequency, see the waveform and then this program itself will calculate the mean, the maximum, the standard deviation, kurtosis, crest factor, form factor, skewness variation. So, you get a feel of the signal, feature of the signal just generating uh, yourself. As if you, you do not need a signal generator or an oscilloscope or a computer to do the analysis if you go to this website. And next module of course, is you could uh, add your own, uh, sorry, you can uh, generate your own uh, signal and then you could also see the same effect. And the second experiment is on the responses of first order and uh, second order systems. You need not go through this right now for this course, but the most important for the frequency analysis is you can find out in the third experiment basics of frequency domain signal analysis. You could be measuring the finding out the amplitude spectrum, the real imaginary spectrum, power spectrum, power spectral density of any type of signal which you want to give. Similarly, here it could be user defined functions, mathematical function, uh, measured data and uh, then in fact, this is how the screenshot of the frequency analyzer looks like. Again here <coughs> you generate the signal, you can decide on the sampling frequency, you can decide on the averaging mode and the type of window and then you can see the amplitude spectrum you can see the real and imaginary spectrum here. So, you could <coughs> use this at home to understand more about the signal analysis and uh, the link to this is this website of iitnoise.com. Okay. Now, uh, let us come back to this uh, frequency domain analysis regarding uh, modulation and sidebands which I will focus uh, mostly in this course here uh, or rather in this lecture here. We had discussed about beats in the last class. So, beating occurs when we have, uh, well before I come to beats, I will uh, tell you something about the harmonics and sidebands. For example, I have a frequency spectrum, I have certain amplitude. So, I have got a certain frequency, the first frequency. 
this is the fundamental okay so this is at a function of say x i am writing this as x and usually people write it as 1x in uh, the literature of condition monitoring it may so happen this signal and you know, this is one type of signal there could be spectrums peaks which are equally spaced and this is an exact multiple of the value here So, these are known as the harmonics. Okay. This helps us to know whether these harmonics are multiple of the fundamental. Suppose this value is, you know, is for example, if this corresponds to 20 hertz. Okay. So, if I see a value at a peak at 40, a peak at 60, a peak at 80, a peak at 100, I know that these frequencies are the harmonics. What happens? Uh, this is a very ideal situation. In the real one, once you go to the FFT analyzers, you will see that there will be a lot of noise like this buried. Okay, and these harmonics are perhaps buried in the FFT. So, to our naked eyes sometimes it becomes very difficult to determine what the harmonics are. So, sometimes there are what is known as the options are available which are known as harmonic cursors. So, once you set at the fundamental a cursor which happens to be the harmonic cursor automatically it will calculate because it knows this distance or it knows this value. So, it will calculate and put the harmonic cursors at all the places in the spectrum and then you can very easily identify whether if there is a peak you know well these are the harmonics and so on. Okay. So, this is what is known as the harmonics <coughs> and harmonics occur because of uh, particularly in unbalance and misalignment you will see lot of such things occur they are all multiple of vibrations. Okay. Then we have what is known as side bands. Side bands occur in the frequency spectrum around a particular frequency. For example, I have a peak here, I will also notice that there are two very prominent peaks almost equally spaced about, this is usually known as the carrier frequency and this is the left side band and this is the right side band. And this value is the value of the what is known as the modulating frequency. So, the modulating frequency was value was f m and uh, this is f c. So, the value here 
left side band will be F C minus F M and here it will be F C plus F M. Okay. <coughs> now, there could be sometimes you know F C minus twice of F M, F C plus twice of F M. So, basically there will be a group of side bands around a carrier frequency. It would suffice right now to say particularly this kind of signals occur in speech signals, occur in gear boxes. Now, these are very ideally represented signals. If you go to the real world machines, again there will be a lot of noise okay. and on top of it there will be many carrier frequencies. On top of it the frequencies could be smearing because of the effect of the loads or the speed fluctuations. So, and then once you do an FFT, you may not be getting a sharp frequency because of the frequency smearing. So, because you know our objective is to identify frequencies. I mean we should why are we studying signal processing? Our primary objective is to identify frequencies so that we can do fault detection. Okay. This is our primary objective. We should never forget that no matter what amount of signal processing we do it may be a mathematical exercise altogether, but end of the day <coughs> unless I detect the faults my signal processing is no good. Okay. <coughs> but so <coughs> what are the tools available excuse me <coughs> excuse me. So what are the tools available to do this kind of signal processing? We will come to this uh, in the later classes regarding substrum analysis wherein we can uh, uh, identify the side bands etcetera, but uh, it would suffice to say that in a frequency spectrum I will be seeing side bands as well as harmonics okay, or I may see none of them also at times. So, now uh, let us see why and how these side bands are generated in the first place and harmonics are generated in the first place. Okay. To begin with let us talk about signal beating. Okay. For example, I have a machine A running at say 1200 rpm that corresponds to 1200 by 60 that is 20 hertz. Okay, some machine is there, it is uh, operating and running. I have another machine B, which is uh, for some reason it had a defective supply or something, it is running at 21 hertz. Okay. Of course, I am standing here. Now, because it is running at 20 hertz and this is a heavy mechanical machinery, it is also going to generate noise at these frequencies. To my ear, I am getting 20 hertz and also I am getting 21 hertz. Okay. And then you know if I have two signals say A 1 is equal to sin omega 1 t plus A 2 equal to sin omega 2 t, where omega 1 is equal to 2 pi f 1. So, in one case f 1 is equal to 20 hertz, in another case f 2 is equal to 21 hertz. Okay. So, once <coughs> I see this or hear this signal in fact, if you mathematically sum the signal, they are going to look like this. A 
of course, I am not being accurate uh, while drawing in my by my hand. This is how it will look in the time domain and if I can uh, draw a waveform, this is the envelope as it is known as and this is the resultant signal A. So, you see this resultant signal which I hear is no longer constant in amplitude, it is changing with frequency and this resultant frequency will be because of f 1 minus f 2 and f 1 plus f 2. Okay. So, two independent frequencies because the relationship between machine A and machine B they are totally independent, but the net effect produces a resultant signal something like this, wherein the frequency then this signal will sound like as if you must have gone to a uh, factory wherein two machines are running and you will get this kind of howling noise you know suddenly noise increasing decreasing increasing decreasing and that is because two machines are running side by side at very similar very close by frequencies. So, frequency of this beating is nothing but f 1 minus f 2 and this is a very small quantity and the time period of this beating is the inverse of this. So, in the frequency domain all I will have is two frequencies close by one is maybe f 2 one is f 1 over certain amplitudes. I will not know whether they are beating unless I see the resultant waveform in the time domain, okay. but I will see two distinct frequencies. and I will also see frequencies of f 1 minus f 2 and f 1 plus f 2. If I see this, I will know the signals are beating. Okay. But another very important characteristics of signal or types of signal is the signal modulation. Okay. Now, suppose I have a signal x t is equal to a sin omega t. Now, this a itself in this case is a constant, but suppose a was also varying with a frequency a is given by a m sin omega m t and this I will write as omega c. Okay. So, my x t will be a m sin omega m t sin omega c t. Okay. So, product of two sin functions will be a summation or you will have components in the resultant as two frequencies one with omega c plus omega m and another with omega c minus omega m. So, the product of two sine waves one is modulating the other like I give an example of a, a very common example is so ceiling fan. ceiling fan the hub rotates at a particular rpm say n rpm is the rotation of the hub and then I have say number of blades is equal to 3 I will have the blade pass frequency as 3 n by 60. So, you see the rotational speed of the ceiling uh, the blade pass frequency and the rotational frequency they are related one is affecting the other and then we can have modulations to begin with, but modulations you will see uh, in details when we talk about defects 
in uh, ball bearings. gears and so on. So, but the fact that x t is equal to a m sin omega m t times sin omega c t, this gives rise to omega c plus minus omega m and this, this is what is the side band. If you look at this FFT of this signal, because modulation has occurred, the resultant waveform will have signals which will have frequencies of omega c plus minus f m, uh, omega c plus minus omega m or f c plus minus omega uh, f m and this is known as the carrier frequency. And this is known as the modulating frequency. I will, uh, so what are the features of this distinguishing features of amplitude modulation? Suppose I have taken an amplitude modulated signal and I have done a fast Fourier transform of such a signal. One is I will see the carrier frequency F c. I will see the modulating frequency, but most important is I will see the sum of the carrier and modulating frequencies, difference of the carrier and modulating frequencies. Okay. In the case of the beating, these frequencies may not be visible, carrier and modulating frequencies. There will be two independent frequencies showing up, it could be F 1 and F 2 very close by and usually in amplitude modulation one is uh, pretty high compared to the other and then this uh, sum and difference frequencies plus these two frequencies will be seen when you can know for sure that amplitude modulation has occurred. Okay. And uh, once we go to gear, but because our objective again is you know how do I find out my carrier frequency and modulated frequencies, because once you do the, so for example, this is a typical uh, modulating signal. I will show you how this becomes modulating, because if you look at this signal, this is in time domain, this is the signal A. So, this is my high frequency carrier signal. So, the <coughs> transducer has collected the signal and it is sending to the receiver or the analyzer and the information is actually this one here. This is the low frequency modulated signal. So, the machine's defect or machine's features are actually there in the blue signal. Machines characteristic frequency. Okay. If I do, so I have to find out a mathematical technique by which I can only obtain this low frequency modulated signal, because otherwise what happens once you go to the frequency domain, there will be so many frequencies, you will be kind of getting lost, which one is your modulating frequency, which one is your carrier frequency, which are the multiples of carrier frequency etcetera, there will be side bands. So, there are mathematical techniques which we will uh, cover subsequently to how do we demodulate, demodulate 
E modulation or sometimes known as envelope analysis. Okay. There are many ways uh, to do demodulation and envelope analysis uh, like using a Hilbert transform uh, that is something we will discuss later on. And then uh, this can be used to obtain this blue signal, the envelope of this modulated signal and thus know more about the mesh static. Okay. I should again uh, tell you one thing other than this virtual labs, I would also recommend that all of you use the MATLAB uh, signal processing toolbox to uh, generate waveform. signal feature extraction both in time and frequency domain and MATLAB is a software which is uh, freely available uh, at the in educational institutes as a floating uh, open license. Students are uh, can use them or you can uh, know, buy them and then use them. But uh, some of the examples which I will be subsequently showing you could be from the our virtual labs uh, website on uh, signal processing and also some examples uh, done on MATLAB. So, in MATLAB if you use the help menu, you can know how to do signal uh, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, how to feature out, uh, find out the side bands etcetera. All these functions are available in the MATLAB. Now, another type of uh, signal modulation is what is known as the frequency modulation. frequency modulation what happens or a f m I am writing a f m a naught sin omega m t plus cosine omega c t. Now, in such a case what happens if I was to draw the signal in time domain, the distinguishing features of frequency domain signal in the time domain is the amplitudes are constant, but the frequencies will vary. So, there will be an increase and decrease of the frequency about the same amplitudes, okay. because you can see these are the high frequency signals, these are the low frequency signals because the time period has changed and the amplitudes are constant. Such signals also we will come across in uh, machinery and then uh, we will see uh, some of the features of this in the signal processing. Now, what are the distinguishing features of the frequency modulated signals? Carrier frequency at the center of component array. you will see a lot of side bands ok. 
Okay. And the presence of a, a multiple side bands with a spacing of F c F c minus F m or F c plus F m some x times F m this is plus and this is again F c plus the minus some multiple of F m. And this actually occur in rotating shafts and particularly when we are monitoring torsional vibrations as a function of the angular displacement. Okay. So, there will be multiple side bands at carrier frequency minus orders of the modulator and multiple side bands at the carrier frequency plus orders of the modulator and constant signal amplitude when viewed in the time domain which you would have seen, but there is no distinct component occurring specifically at the modulating frequencies which was uh, present in the case of amplitude modulated signals. So, you will not see this happening in the case of the frequency domain F m signals. No. Now, this A m and F m signals have tradition, traditionally been used in electronics, mostly for radar communication, wherein the because you know the carrier frequencies are usually high frequency signals and high frequency signals are very directive. Okay. For example, the radio signals, the TV signals, they are very very high frequency signals, gigahertz and very directional. So, if you have an antenna, you, know, you must have observed that when an antenna particularly with your you know, short wave radios or AM radios, you have to point the antenna towards the source and because these are high frequencies, they are very directional and on this carrier, carrier high frequency high frequency carrier signals. My information signal is, this is the information signal. It could be a radio station signal, TV, it could be machinery. Okay, these people talk in the order of gigahertz, I am talking in the order of only hertz or kilohertz. Okay. Our signals are of much, much lower bandwidth than the radio signals, but nevertheless the physics of data communication is the same, the laws are the same, but objective again from a machinery condition monitoring point of views, how do I get this information, whether it is frequency modulated or amplitude modulated is immaterial to me as long as by some signal processing algorithm, I can find out this information, green information signal. Okay. And that is what we will uh, discuss in the subsequent uh, classes regarding how do I find out the harmonics, how do I find out the side bands, most important, importantly how do I find out the modulated signals from such a composite signals. And uh, mind you, once you go to the frequency spectrum of a signal, because see my machine is there, my machine is an inanimate object 
and uh, many things are ha happening uh, in it simultaneously. All I have is put this poor transducer. Okay. So everything depends on what my transducer is capturing. So the phenomena of resonance could be occurring. The phenomena of modulation could be occurring. Okay, everything and of course our good friend noise is always present. Okay. So all everything is happening together in this system and I only capture this by a transducer and transducer is no matter what you see in an oscilloscope it will always give me signal which is you know I can make nothing out of it. Okay. Our starting point in CBM is this. I will not get a signal, a transducer will never tell ah, this is your modulated signal, this is your resonance signal, this is your noise signal. No, everything is there built in. Summation, some effect of all signals are there. So, we have to now use our skills, mathematical power. How do I analyze such signals? First of all is whether it is a stationary signal, whether it is a non-stationary signal, whether I can find out features in the time domain which are repeating, repeatability of the signals or whether it is one of a kind. Then we have to go into the frequency domain, see if my FFT, I can see the frequencies as sharp peaks or there are no frequency smearing, this is to be avoided. Now on top of it, if signals are getting modulated there are presence of lot of side bands and end of the day I will land up with a signal wherein a lot of these components are there. So, then we will see how we can uh, analyze the signals to get the different frequency content of the signal. Okay. So, I think uh, with this I will uh, stop here. Thank you.